how did that like how, how how did that happen? Like how did the the dance music come into play with the like how did street get into that type of music? I don't even understand that. <clears throat> oh, it really wasn't. I wrote it the first of my kind. Mm. It really wasn't. But it still was a a genre of not before me. But even if it wasn't before you, because I don't know the dates. But I'm, saying, was, I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking like general because I don't know what yeah. every city or town got going on because everybody got underground music. Mm -hmm. Before us, the people who danced wasn't the gangsters. The gangsters was the people who danced in the '80s. Mm. When the when the nineties and the late nineties and early two thousand coming, gangsters wasn't dancing no more. Yeah, it was they were scraped back against the wall. I remember this selling drugs. They you know like what I'm yeah. saying it wasn't no it wasn't no more. Shit. If you dance, it wasn't nothing but the crazy and the dance. Mm -hmm. When you go to the club, that's it. You see what I'm saying? It was a transitional period. You see what I'm saying? Like back growing up, it was cool to dance when we was little. It was cool to do the Humpty Dumps, the MC Hammers, the Michael Jackson, all the you know all the dances. That was cool when we was young. You know what I'm saying? But then we started getting older. Nobody wants dancing no more. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? I, me, and my homie, my homie Dow, uh, rest easy, my dog Seven, uh, we was gangsters. But we used to, so we used to get geeked up all the beans and, shit, mm -hmm. and we just have fun, and we just dance. Gangsters boogie like we, the music come on, we get to just get to doing. Shit. We weren't scared to be who we was. So when the music, when I started doing music, I used to just dance. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I didn't have no problem with it. I never seen a difference in between the different because I always knew who I was. Mm. So it's a different when they don't really know who they is or they're trying to portray an image that they don't know. I've been being up since I've been little. I've been with this shit since I've been little. Mm -hmm. Since ever, anybody can ever remember me from any time in their life, they're going to always say, he always been on that. Mm -hmm. So it ain't no faking no facade with me. You see what I'm saying? I'm cool and comfortable with who I am. So what you telling me, the f them franchise boys, they was the first of the like snap and pop? They want over dancers. Don't nobody in my group dance. I dance. So that's the thing about it. They were just doing it because the dance became popular. You know what I'm saying? See, if you if you be for real, on some for real, like, Franchise Boys wasn't even on Lean With It Rock With It. Mm -hmm. And it was already the number one song in Atlanta. So wait, they wasn't on? No. We talking about before it hit mainstream. Yeah. Okay, okay. They wasn't on it. It was no, it was already mainstream. I guess it was like Southern though. But it was already the number one song in Georgia, mm -hmm. both radio stations. So I had Lean with it, rock with it, and Oh I Think They Like Me remix playing at the same time. But I'm not on Oh I Think They Like Me. Cause I quit the group. So I quit the group like three times. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so most of this stuff that was happening, then you gotta think all this shit happened in like a three year span. Like all this happened in like a three year span. White T, oh, I think they like me. Lean with it, rock with it. Well, White T came out in 2003. It officially came out in 2004. That's like, when, like, the world mainstream. Okay, heard it. All right. <clears throat> oh, I think they like me got recorded in 2003. It was on our first album that we dropped in 2004. Lean with it, rock with it got recorded in the 2004, the end of 2004. But it didn't get released until 2006. Mm. You see what I'm saying? V103 still played the original version of Lean with it, rock with it. And it was me, all my artists. Mm. See, because I produced Lean With It, Rock With It. You know what I'm saying? So I came up with the whole the whole term, the dance, the name. I, I came up with all that before we even recorded the song. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I just put all my artists on there. And I was just like, I'm going to do, do like Wu-Tang be doing shit. I'm going to put all my artists. We're going to get on one song. I'm going to just have to promote all my artists. Because all my artists were like the hottest art acts in the pool palace in the club we used to go to. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now when I got one of my homies, uh, Shawty Black from Trout Squad, he was he had another group. They from the West Side too, but they had a hot group too. You know what I'm saying? And I went to put him uh, on the song, and they produced the name with Book. Book is my homie Pimpin' in my group who produced. They cousins. You know what I'm saying? So I got Book to make the beat. You know what I'm saying? So man, when I got there, when all of us got there. So I just said, "This is the idea." I'm gonna put some snaps in it. And then me and Book was going back and forth, like, they ain't gonna put no soft ass snaps in there. Goddamn. So I'm like, this ain't your shit. It is. Mm. I'm telling you what, like, we went back and forth about it. So the original <clears> version of <throat> Lean with a Rock with it got uh, claps on the hook and it got snaps on the verses. Mm. See, that's how we that's how we changed it. But and when we end up redoing it, and I put the franchise boys on it, we should end up putting the snaps all throughout it. You see what I'm saying? 
So it's crazy because even back then, I guess, even with coming up with the the snap music, even with then it was like kind of like still new. Like we wasn't really rocking with it. But see, because it wasn't <laughs> snap music. I don't see the term snap music came from like the RIAA, the record results and stuff because in like in 2004, it was like five or six song top 10. All of them had snaps in it. David Banner, Whisper, the David Banner song he had, the uh, Yin Yang Twin, Whisper song, our song, uh, Laffy Taffy, uh, Cherish, uh, Lean With It, Rock With It. Who? Uh, Fabo was? In D4L. D4L, okay. You know what I'm saying? So all these songs is out at one time, and all of them had snaps in it. But this not snap music to us. We call it pool pattern music. You oh. know what I'm saying? We don't call it snap music. That's just that. They just named it. So the it labels that. did this. Yeah, the labels did that. But I see artists have arguments about like who created because it ain't. It's not. A, it's not. A, it's, that's why I'm telling people. You know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to this, and I mean it humbly. Can't nobody tell you more about this than me because I was here from the get go. Mm. I, I, we are the reasons. We are the reason, and not just here. We are the reasons. We want to be rappers. We are the reasons want to be producers before us wasn't didn't want to be producers and rappers my if you was rapping to produce your family did it you was just gifted you i've been knowing she was gonna do that since he was a kid i didn't do that shit before us. you talking about worldwide or just period like, eh, Kanye west was wanted to be a rapper when he was a producer he's a different one that's what i'm saying okay. other than those who already is gifted who already i know i want to be a producer i was in the band i was making beats i've always been musically inclined mm-hmm after us, street start getting labels. Mm. Dope boys start picking up microphones. Those who, those who went to college, who 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 was who know the street who front of projects became A and R's because these crackers were scared to go to these projects. We changed everything. Mm. These are facts. These facts. So let me ask you this: So if Franchise Boys wasn't even on the original songs, mm -hmm. how, how did they form? See, we was already together. See, okay, so. I know Buddy. It's me, Buddy. Rest easy, Buddy. Buddy died of cancer in 2019, too. So rest easy, Buddy. It was me, Buddy, Pimp, and the Jizzle Man. All right? All of us from projects that don't get along. All right? None of our projects get along. Buddy hangs with two of guys from our project, my homie Danielle and my homie Ray Sean. You know what I'm saying? And they play sports with Buddy. You know what I'm saying? They was like on the sports side. So... I used to go hoop with them because I, I was a hoop star. You know what I'm saying? So we used to go play play for money everywhere. And my and Buddy didn't hoop for real. So they would come pick me up, and me and my homie, my homies from our projects, used to go play three on three and shit for mm. money. Yeah, that definitely was a project thing. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. yeah, but I used to travel all over Atlanta and do this. Shit. Five on five, two on two, the one, one on one. Yeah, yeah. I used to play hot sauce, spider, and one. I yeah. don't know what's going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure. So um, that's how I met Buddy. So that's how me and Buddy fought the relationship. I met Pimp during high school because we played on the same varsity team in 11th grade. Give me years with, with so this, this song. Is, so <clears throat> are you making music? Are, are nah, you? I never wanted to be a rapper. Okay. Never okay. thought about it. Never tried to. I still don't even really call myself a rapper. I just do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So this is like 2000. 2000. So this is what we're doing. So, um. I'm I'm hustling already. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm already hustling in tenth grade. I'm just that's what I do every day. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to play sports no more. You know what I'm saying? So coaches would come to my projects and like Coach Frazier always he had an ice cream truck and a, um like a barbecue grill truck where to sell the food and shit. He's always come to my projects and tell all the dope boys like, hey man, tell him he need to come to practice and tell him he need to do this. You know what I'm saying? And it, by this time, I'm like fifteen, I'm like Shh. I don't want to. Ain't that too, too much? I don't want to do this. Shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But 11th grade, I said I'm gonna play basketball because I actually leave school and just go to basketball practice. You know, football you got to go summertime practice, mm -hmm. two a day. I don't see. I wasn't doing none of that. Shit. I'm mm. trapping. Like I ain't. I ain't got time to do none of that. So I played basketball. In 10th grade, I did a um. I did a um. Everything in my life has been predicated off of me trying to hustle. Mm. Everything that I have received in my life comes from me <clears throat> trying to hustle. Side, sidebar, we're going to get back to the Franchise Boys, but 
rumor has it, you were one of the creators of the two for five. Yeah. Two for was two, two for five. five. Yeah, I was the first nigga in the city with two for five. That's crazy. That's how, that's how I began. That's how I became known in the streets. For real. Like, that's how I became like. That's how I became known everywhere. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? That's how I've been known everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So it started with like all this shit kind of tying. It started when I went to college. Boom. So I go to college. I meet pimp. I do this. Do this song in tenth grade. I do this acapella. Do language art festival. You don't go to the Lang Art Festival, you don't got to go to four period. Four period is lunch, so it's an hour and a half. Everybody project niggas skip lunch and go to the project and back my high school dug and go to Dixon Hill and go smoke weed until lunch over there come back to class. I used to want to serve everybody. So I did this shit to skip lunch. Mm. Boom. School go crazy. Skip the lunch. I do what I need to do. Now everybody wants me to rap. So all the niggas who do music and beats like rap, rap. Oh, I ain't fucking starting that shit. I ain't trying to do none of this shit. 11th grade come, we're doing basketball. Pimp would beat on the lockers. And I rap this, I rap the, my verse. And everybody be singing it. She like Sunset Park. Mm. You know what I'm saying? All year. So I'm still ain't tripping. So Pimp would say, come on my house. So I say, you buy some weed from me. So he'll buy some weed and we'll skip school, go to his house. He was selling tele- cell phones and shit, turning on them next tail, chirps and shit. He was turning them bitches on and shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how me and Pimp formed a relationship. Like I'm telling you, Pimp is from Allen Temple. We beef. Nobody in my nobody from my project has ever hung with nobody from Ellen Temple before me. The projects that that Buddy is from, we war with them. Like you can't even be don't even get seen at the gas station over here. They've been chasing us since I've been not eight, nine, ten years old. You see what I'm saying? But I formed relationships, so all this shit is kind of slick, weird to me at the time. So boom. 12th grade, I had to go to I had to go to school. I went to school from eight in the morning to eight at night, my whole twelfth grade year. Just to graduate. You was behind? Yeah. Yeah, that yep. You know like doing Twilight school shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I did that. So by me doing that, I can't play no sports. You know what I'm saying? But I want triple because I like I just want to graduate. It's just my mind's always been like a little different. You know what I'm saying? So, buddy, my homie, two homie, Danielle and Ray, who I started to hoop with, they graduated before me. So they go to HBCU called Barbara Scotia in North Carolina. It's like 10 minutes away from Charlotte. Mm. So they back home. They like, come to school. I'm like, nigga, fuck school. They're like, man, you ain't doing nothing else. You know, they, they positive. So I always got an ear for positive shit. So I'm like, I, I go up there. I ride up. They like, just ride with me. Ride up there with us. So I say, uh, I ride with y'all if y'all smoke weed with me. Go my dilemma. They said, okay. So they, this is their first time smoking weed. So we smoke weed. I ride up there with them. I'm walking to school. They go up there. You know how you put your classes in, what you want to take prior. Mm-hmm. I mean, after when you come back to school. So I'm walking. You know, eight, every HBCU is on the projects. Every HBCU in the United yeah. States of America is mm-hmm. in the projects. Mm-hmm. I'm walking. Or in the hood. And, Not like, necessarily the projects. But the same yeah, the difference. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So a nigga walk up on me, ask me, do I got some weed? <clears> said, yeah, I got some weed. So I give him a nick. He give me $10. So, you know, I, I he give me the $10. You know, I put the money in my pocket. You know, I brought my bum, I put my bum in my pocket, but the guy walk off on me. You mm. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so now I'm like, so I asked one of the guys who went to school that were for us, like, hey, what DC is right here? He like, these dimes up here, and they don't got green weed like that. Well, you'll sell out. I walked to the front and signed up for college. Mm. Got three scholarships. <laughs> That's how I got to college. Damn. You know what That's I'm saying? That's crazy. So we, so we go home, we come home for the summertime. I do my summertime thing. Now it's time to go back to school for orientation. So take it, 12th grade, pimp, pimp and leaves my high school and go to another school on the west side. So I don't see him at all and take it. I told you he's from another project, so I don't talk to him and don't see him or nothing. First day of orientation, go get all my class and stuff. I'm walking down the sidewalk, uh, walking to the dorm uh, and see the window up here, a beat playing. So now every time I hear a beat playing, I'm rapping this verse. But you got to think. This is at a time, ain't no such thing as instrumentals. Yeah. If you hear instrumentals, it's somebody's song. Yeah. So every time I hear a, a, a instrumental, I start rapping this thing to it. So I'm walking and I'm rapping it to it. I'm like, oh shit, who the fuck is this shit? So I walk in the, walk in the dorm, walk to the go, I walk in the room. Pimp's in there with his back turned. He turned around, he like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, nigga, I'm in college, nigga. That's the first thing I said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's like, oh shit, I'm like, remember that song? He like, yeah. So I said, let's record it. Damn. So we recorded it right then. And that's Dylan, can you get my phone for me? That's so 
And that song is the biggest underground hit on the West Side. Hands what's, down. What song was this? Money. It's called M O N E Y. Damn. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. No, huh? Take it. Just in case uh, uh Mark you sent me. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So but wait. So y'all together, right? Because he a part of the franchise boys. No, ain't no franchise boy yet. Okay. But he is he a part of yeah, y'all? He's the producer. Okay. But when you make Lean with it, rock with it, uh, original. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what was the song that you said they wasn't on that? Place? Lean with it, rock with Lean it. Lean with it, rock with it, and that's mm-hmm. going up. That's going crazy in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You got your artists on it. Mm-hmm. At what point are you like, I right, I want my homies on it? Like, that, how how did they form from that? Okay, so we, <clears throat> JD asked us what was going on with us because we were signed to Universal. So you were signed to Universal before. Yeah. Franchise boy, it's even no. Nah, us, we signed Universal Franchise Boys. But so, before this, though, I'm assuming the song yes, that's playing. White T got us the deal. But even before you said the songs was playing in Atlanta before yeah, y'all even yeah. was Franchise Boys. Rock, no, Lean with the Rockwood was playing. Yeah, you but Lean with the Rock with it. But I was even, I, But nah, it was that white, wasn't you wasn't on that one. Yeah, I wasn't on Lean with. I wasn't on All I Think They Like Me. So we had White T, All I Think They Like Me, and then Lean with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I Which was, one was first before white the deal? T. White T was the deal, the one that got us the deal. You was on, but money was the song that got us popular. Money, yeah, the song I told y'all recorded in college. In college, okay, that got us popular. Okay, like that's the song that blew up in the whole city of Atlanta. I don't give a damn what side you went to. Every fucking project and every project club was playing my song. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So I started. But doing this shows. is your song produced it was just my by, song by yeah, produced man. by Pimp. Okay, it wasn't no group yet. Okay, but Buddy was my roommate in college. So Buddy was my roommate. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I would make Buddy give me a whole bunch of concepts and I go rap. I never went to class. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So when we came home, the song ended up being big. This is in 2002. Mm-hmm. That's when I went to college. <clears throat> when we came, Pimp came home in uh, November for Thanksgiving. He didn't come back to college no more. He just stayed. He said that shit wasn't for him. I, we came back. Everybody else went back. Springtime, we recorded White T. The song. We- you and the producer. Me, Buddy, me, Buddy, and Pimp. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because Pimp, Pimp is the producer, but he rap too. Okay. So he on all the songs too. Okay. So me, Buddy, and Pimp, we all three went to college. We record White T. We didn't meet Jizz our fourth member until we came back from but college. But even before y'all, but when y'all record, because you was just a rapper, are you? No, are I y'all... wasn't rapping. No, I'm saying you did that money song. Yeah. But you was just rapping on your man on your man beat. Mm-hmm. Are, you, are you like, yo... We always together, let's rap, or was they rapping too? No, nobody was. No, well, Jizzle was rapping, but I didn't know him. I made Buddy rap. Okay. I was just like, shit, well, you got to rap too. Shit, you make me come to school. Okay. Well, you got to rap too. You know what I'm saying? And we used to, Buddy used to give us a lot of concepts. Mm. Like, Buddy is the one who came up with the concept of doing the White T song. I just wrote the hook. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But so that's how, it, that's how it started. It was just organic. Pimp, Pimp wasn't trying to rap, he was just producing. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But when he came home and he ain't had nobody to record, he started recording with Jizzle. Mm. So when we came back home from college and we go to Pimp House to record, that's when we met Jizzle. Okay. So okay. this is like in the end of 2002, <clears throat> like Crema time and shit. Mm. You see what I'm saying? We go back to school, you know, the beginning of the year. I don't come back home until, until uh, spring break. You know what I'm saying? We record YT on spring break. Go back to school, I come back home, summertime 2003. My song is the hottest song in the streets. Mm. So now I'm doing shows for my song. So we would do three songs. This song called We From The A, White T, and my song Money. Money. Mm. You see what I'm saying? I go back to school. First first semester of my sophomore year. You know what I'm saying? By the time I come back for by the time I come back for Thanksgiving. By the time I think I come back for Thanksgiving, I'm trying to see I got kicked out. So I'm trying to see when I got kicked out when I came back. Nah, I didn't. I was always coming back. So I came back every Wednesday and Friday. I was trapping. Me and my homeboy D. Shout out to my homeboy Big D. My homeboy, he'll take me in the car. He's going to drive back every time. Mm. So now the white, the pool palace is playing White T and, and Money, both in the club. So now I got the two hottest club songs in the club. Did you notice in North Carolina? Well, of course you was coming back on Wednesdays and Fridays. You uh-huh. said. But in North Carolina, are you in it? But that's what no, that's what made me know I had a hit song because I would perform at all the HBCUs, Riley State, John C. C. Smith. I was just going to all the HBCUs to their talent shows, and all us, all the people from Atlanta, and Miami, will go with us, and we'll go perform the song. Mm. You know what I'm saying? 
And that's how I start seeing a response like, well, that song hard as hell. But I had already kind of knew it because everybody was trying to get me to record the song when I was in 10th grade. But you got to think, I'm in college now. This shit like, it's like two and a half, almost three years ago. Mm. It's a different span. You know what I'm saying? But now the songs are, they are moving. Shit. Wait, they wanted you to record the same songs? Like, so you've been at these songs. I told you I did this. I did the verse. and I did When the, he's beating on the locker? Yes, I did. It was an acapella. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But the crazy part about it is, I think my my first verse got like 24 bars. Because mm. I didn't know how to. And it, it really wasn't a rap song because I didn't do it over beat. I just kind of like, it was kind of like a poem, kind of like a poemish type shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, so the shit then. Later on, I got kicked out of college like two months after then. We got a deal. 